this video is going to look at data sets and their patterns and see if we can find equations just from looking at data. Again, this video is going to assume that you've already learned about linear, quadratic, and exponential functions because we're going to look at all three of those. So our first example here, we want to determine whether it's linear, quadratic, or exponential and then see what patterns we see and then see if we can find the equation. So this looks like x is changing by 1 all the way through. And this looks like I might have maybe subtracted 2 or divided in half. But then here I didn't do and divide in half or subtract 2. I actually added 0. And then I have that I added 2 here or multiplied by 2. And if I look at here, it looks like I might have multiplied by 2. But because I see that I decreased and then I increased, that sign tells me that it's going to be quadratic. And this looks like maybe doubling here at the bottom, but I decreased at the beginning, and exponentials always increase or always decrease, so it's not exponential. This one's going to be quadratic. Now quadratic, I can tell by looking at the pattern that it increases and decreases or decreases and increases, but I really have a hard time finding the equation by just looking at that table. The easiest way to do that is to go into my stats and just put my data in there. I've already put the x in there to save some time, but now I'm going to put in my y values, or my f of x values. 4, 2, enter, 2, enter, 4, enter, 8, enter. Now we've decided it's a quadratic, so when I go back to STAT and over to Calculate, I'm going to choose a quadratic regression, which is 5, and then enter, and I find out that f of x is going to be equal to 1x squared, minus 3x plus 4, or x squared minus 3x plus 4 if you'd rather. All right, let's look at this one. Again, x is changing by 1 all the way down, so that means that nice things will happen on the other side for me. And when I look at this one, it looks like maybe I added 3, and if I go from 5 to 8, I added 3 again, and 8 plus 3 is 11, and 11 plus 3 is 14, so I've added the same thing. So when you add the same thing, a consistent amount every time, that's going to be a linear function. And with linear functions, if x changed by 1, that makes it really nice because my slope, even if it hadn't changed by 1, as long as it's con changing by a consistent thing as well as my y's changing by a consistent thing, remember it's the difference of the y's, so that's a 3, over the difference of the x's, which in this case is just 1. So my slope is 3. And then I just need to know my y-intercept, and this table told me why my y-intercept. When x is 0, I know that my y-intercept, this 2, is my b. So then I can write g of x is equal to 3, my slope, times x, plus my b, which is 2. And then finally, we have this one. And you might be saying, oh, it's got to be exponential because we haven't done one. But let's prove it to ourselves. Again, x is changing by 1 all the way down. And here it looks like I've gone maybe 2 times 3, if I want to think about it that way, or 2 plus 4. But when I do 6, I didn't add 4, and I did multiply by 3. And 6 times 3 would be 18. 18 times 3 is 54, and 54 times 3 is 62, or 162. So I can see that this one, since I'm multiplying a consistent amount every time, this one is exponential. And exponential functions, we need an a times b to the x. Remember, this one is our y-intercept. Well, do we have a y-intercept? We do, because we had the x equals 0. Again, our y-intercept, in this case it's a, is equal to 2. And our b is what we were multiplying every time, so that's this times 3. So h of x is equal to a, which is 2, times my base, which is 3, to the x. So again, quadratics have an increasing and decreasing thing going in, a, in the table, and you can also see a symmetry to it. 
We've got these twos that are right next to each other, but on either side of that we have a four. And if we had gotten this, could see negative one, it would be an eight, just like the eight is on the other side of the four below it. And linears, we add the same thing consistently from one point to the next. That tells us it's linear. And exponentials, we multiply consistently from one to the next so that we can have an exponential function.